Hi and welcome to this SolidWorks tutorial for a wooden marble run set. In this tutorial I will demonstrate a range of modelling features such as lofted and swept cuts. I will be creating a range of track parts for creating a marble run track in an assembly. The marble part for this tutorial is already done and available to download from the blog. To begin, open a new part. I'm going to start with some basic blocks, so starting from the top plane Use the centre rectangle to draw a 30 by 30 mil square. Extrude it by 15 mil and then save the part as 15 by 30. Then keeping the part open, edit the extruded height of the block to 30 mil. Then use save as to save the part as 30 by 30. Repeat the process to create a 45 mil tall block. Use save as again to save the part as 45 by 30. Next, for the more detailed track blocks, I'm going to create a split track block to do this. So starting from the top plane, extrude a 30 by 30 mil square up by 30 mil to create a cube. Then start on a sketch on the top face of the cube, draw a 15 mil circle in the middle of the face. Extrude cut the sketch by 22.5 mil. Fill at the inner edge of the face cut by 7.5 mil to look like this. Then making hidden lines visible, sketch onto this side of the cube Draw a second 15mm circle from the centre point here. Extrude cut the circle by 15mm. Then sketch onto the next side face and repeat the process. Start the circle from this point and cut extrude 15mm into the cube. Next fill in this inner edge here by 2.5mm. With this block done, save the part as split track then close it. Starting a new part, begin a sketch onto the top plane and draw a 30 by 30 mil square again with the centre rectangle. Extrude by 30 mil to create another cube. To create a corner track piece, I'm going to create a sweep cut. The first thing I need for this is a sweep path. Sketching onto the top face of the cube, draw a line from the centre of one of the edges up to the centre, then to the other mid edge. Use the sketch fillet to fill up the corner by 10mm, then close the sketch. For the sweep profile, sketch onto the front face of the cube and draw a 15mm circle centred to the top centre point and close the sketch. You can then use swept cut. For the sweep profile, the circle should be selected. Then for the sweep path, select the other sketch and OK the feature. Finally, soften the edges of the cut using the fillet tool. Fill in these two edges by 1mm. Save the part as corner track and close it. For this next track part, which will be used as the starting piece, start a new sketch onto the top plane. Draw a 30 by 30mm square and extrude it by 60mm. Selecting the top plane, add a new plane 15mm above it like this. Then start a new sketch onto the top base of the extrusion. Viewing it normal too, Draw a 15mm circle centred to the top line, then close the sketch. This will be one of the profiles used for the lofted cut. For the next profile, sketch onto the new plane. Use the circle and draw a 14mm circle away from the block like this. Then use move entities to move the circle from its top point to the top point of the other circle like this, and close the sketch. Then under features, use the lofted cut tool and select both circle profiles. Ensure the lofted cut is running straight and not twisted. Then you can OK the feature. Next, sketch onto the inner face here and use convey entities to create a revolve profile. Use revolve cut under features and select this axis, then OK the feature. Fill in the inner edges of the block here by 1mm and OK. Save the part as start track and close it. Now to create the slope track. Start a sketch onto the right plane. Using the line tool, sketch 120mm horizontal line from the parts axis. Then go up by 30mm, then diagonally back level with the axis and join it up to create a slope profile. Adding dimensions to the profile, this line should be 15mm, this line again should be 30mm, and the bottom line should be 120mm. 
You can then extrude the sketch mid-plane by 30mm. To create the marble track, sketch onto the end face and draw a 15mm circle from the top midpoint. Using Cut Extrude, cut the sketch through all. Selecting into the direction box, select the sloped edge of the extrusion and OK it. Then fill up the top edges of the cut by 1mm. Save the part as slope track and close it. Moving on to the wavy slope track, sketching onto the right plane, use the line tool and starting from the part axis, draw a line horizontally across by 150mm, then up by 45mm. Slope back down towards and level to the axis and join it up to close it. Then add some dimensions. This edge should be 15mm, the other edge should be 45mm and the bottom edge should be 150mm. Extrude the sketch by 30mm mid plane. To create the wavy track, I'm going to use a swept cut. To create the path for the sweep, sketch onto the top face of the extrusion and view normal too. Use the line to draw a 15mm line down from the top edge. Then draw another 15mm line up from the bottom edge. Then use the centre line to go from the end point to the centre of the extrusion like this. Then join it up to the other line. Next use the three point arc and start from here, draw the arc up to the centre of the guideline at a radius of 25. Then do another starting from the end of this one up to the other point, again with a radius of 25, only this time going the opposite way to look like this. Repeat this two more times until it's joined up. Delete both of the centre line guides. You then need to use sketch fillet to soften the lines joining the arcs. Do this by 15mm on each. You can then close the sketch. For the sweep profile, sketch onto the front of the extrusion and draw a 15mm circle centre to the top edge of the face, then close it. I can then open up the sweep cut feature with the circle still selected. Select the wavy sketch for the sweep path. The preview should look like this. OK the feature to create the sweep cut. Next, fill at the inner edge of the cut by 1mm like this. Finally, save the part as wavy slope track and close it. The next block is a pipe block. Start on a new sketch onto the top plane, draw a 30 by 30 mil square, then extrude the sketch by 60 mil. Sketch onto the top face, draw a 15 mil circle in the centre of the face. Cut extruded by 37.5 mil. Fill the inner face of the cut by 7.5 mil. Then sketching onto the front face of the block, turn on hidden lines visible, use the circle and going from the centre of this edge, draw a 15mm circle. Cut extrude the sketch by 15mm, creating a pipe-like cutout of the block. You can then save the part as pipe track and close it. The final block is the end piece of the track. Sketching onto the top plane, use the centre rectangle to draw a 60 by 60 mil square. Extrude the sketch by 15mm. Then sketching onto the top face, use the centre line to create some guides. Going from the centre of the square's face, draw a line up by 1.5mm and out by 1.5 Using the end point of these guides, draw an 18mm circle from the point, then a 48mm circle from the same point. Extrude cut the sketch by 7.5mm. Then fill up the face of the extruded cut by 7.5mm. To create the pathways into the track part, sketch onto the front of the block, make hidden lines visible, select the circle sketch tool and hover over the fillet edge until the centre guide becomes visible. Draw a 15mm circle from here and extrude cut the circle by 31.5mm. Repeat the process on the next side of the block from the left side like this. You should be left with a block that looks like this. Finally, fill the opening edges here by 1mm. You can then save the part as end track and close it. With all the parts of the track finished, you can open and apply any appearances you like. I added natural and coloured wood appearances to the blocks and resaved them. Starting a new assembly, I'm opening all the parts apart from the marble part and I'm assembling a track.
You can design whatever track you want here. You can be creative with it or just copy the one that I've done. Once you have a complete track, you can add in some marbles into the start track block. You can use different views to place the marbles onto the track piece and also use tangent mates to get the marbles in place. Once you're happy with the marble run setup, save your assembly. Before I start the motion analysis, select all the parts apart from the marbles in the assembly tree here and right click and select fix to keep all the blocks fixed into place. This simplifies the motion analysis and stops the blocks from falling. Select a motion study one, change the motion study type to motion analysis. Then add gravity using this icon, ensuring that the gravity is applied to the Y axis facing down like this. Next apply contacts with this icon and use control A to select all the parts in the assembly. This ensures all the parts interact with each other. Without this, the marbles would fall straight through the blocks. I'm going to keep the length of the analysis at five seconds. Before I run it, I need to suppress the tangent mates of the marbles. You can do this under the mates drop down here. I can now select this icon to run the analysis. The analysis will play out as it runs, so you can watch how it unfolds. You can get different results from the marbles falling depending on where they are placed. The analysis may take a few minutes to finish. Once it's done, you can replay the analysis and change the speed. I'm going to slow it down first, which you can do here, and then press play. If you wish to render the analysis as an animation, you can do that using SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Select in the Visualize tab, use Export Advanced and select Motion Study 1 in the drop down options. This will open up the model with the analysis information in Visualize. Here you can play out the animation. Sometimes it's best to change the render modes to the simpler view so that it plays out better. You can also change the aspect ratio of the rendering, the background style, brightness and the placement of the model. There are so many possibilities in Visualize, especially when creating different camera angles. But for this rendering, I'm keeping the camera in one place. I can then select Tools and Render. Ensure that the output tools are set to animation and rename your file. I'm going to change the frames per second number here to 45 so that I can edit the video later and slow down the parts of the video without losing video quality. With that set, I can then start the render here. You can watch frame by frame each render being completed. It will also show you how many frames you have left and how long the rendering is going to take. This one took around 30 minutes. Here is the finished animation rendering after it was edited. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to share your own marble run setup. Thanks for watching.